Welcome back to Hypertops. I'm James and today we're doing something a bit different. As I get closer and closer to breaking the record for the world's longest spinning top, it gets progressively harder to make improvements. But this didn't stop almost 1000 of you from giving me more suggestions on what to do in the comments of my last video, and one theme kept coming up. Is there any realistic spinning time to be gained from improving spinning techniques? Have you ever tried using the two very best ways to start a All sorts of ideas came flooding in. Well this gave me the last bit of motivation I needed to do something I've wanted to do properly for years, and that is to find the best, most optimal grip design and spinning technique for my tops. You see, I used to think the grip was unimportant in the overall design of the spinning top. I would get it to a size that felt good and maybe add some knurling and that's it. And it's not just me that feels this way, knurling is generally seen as a bit of a dark art in the machining world. Well we've reached the point where that's not good enough. It's time to do some real science and properly optimise the grip. So how are we going to do this? First I want to find the grippiest grip. I want to see how diameter, taper, concavity and knurling pattern affect grip. And after some thinking, this is the setup I came up with. I have an L-shaped piece of titanium, free to rotate, with a test subject here. I just give it a twist, and record the maximum force generated against this scale. By multiplying this force by this length, I get a torque reading. I ended up testing loads and loads of different designs for this video, and it would have taken way more time and money to do so if it wasn't for the sponsor of this video, Bamboo Lab. It was actually me that reached out to them a few months ago, because I knew that having a good 3D printer would revolutionise my workflow and allow me to conduct research far more easily, and I've got to say, I've really enjoyed using their A1 printer. Despite my minimal experience, it was super user friendly, and I was printing the same day it arrived. It's quiet and fast, and it does all the bed levelling and filament management itself. Honestly I'm very impressed. The A1 has proven itself to be a massive upgrade of my fiddly old Creality, and it's going to be a game changer for future videos. So whether you're interested in upgrading your printer or trying rapid prototyping for the first time, I would encourage you to look at what Bamboo Lab has to offer. I've put a link to their website in the video description which you can check out after this video. Back to the experiment. With the designs printed, I set about testing them, and I quickly discovered a flaw in my plan. Yeah, it turns out it's quite painful to twist small bits of plastic as hard as you can over and over and over again. But for the sake of spinning top science and all your comments, I did it, so don't forget to subscribe. Ignoring the state of my fingers, I'm really happy with the data I collected. Let's look at the results. First, I wanted to test how diameter affected torque. I tested some 1.5 and 2mm diameter wire and 3D printed cylinders from 3 to 9mm and the results are probably what you would expect. A nice linear relationship between diameter and torque. This makes sense because of our torque formula from earlier, torque equals force times distance. And it seems this principle also extends to tapered grips. The larger the average diameter, the more torque they generate. But these are boring linear tapers, what about something more interesting like a concave or convex grip? Being careful to compare the middle diameters of the grips instead of their overall tapers, I repeated the experiment. Here are the results. It's very close, but it looks like the convex grips have a slight edge over the other two. Now the interesting bit. Which knurling pattern is the grippiest? My first test looked at the impact of the angle of knurling. My intuition told me that this design should work best, as it would bite into my fingers most and that's why I've used it previously, but this is what the data says. Although there's clearly an advantage over no knurling, it seems like the angle of knurling has little impact. In fact, clockwise and anti-clockwise leaning knurls perform almost identically. Isn't that bizarre? Next, I compared some different patterns and their coarsenesses. I tried straight, angled, spiral, cross, and diamond knurling, all against a smooth cylinder and for each pattern I tried fine, medium and coarse. I have to say, I was blown away by the detail the A1 printer was able to get. Anyway, here are the results. 
straight away you can notice some interesting things. Firstly, it appears that adding knurling can sometimes be worse for grip. My guess is it's because the perceived diameter is smaller. The next insight is that the medium pattern almost always performed best. I think this is due to a similar effect, but it certainly surprised me. The one exception is diamond, but the coarse print for that design looked quite medium to me. So here are the top performers in order. Personally, I was surprised at how well Spiral performed, but diamond still came up on top. I guess there's a reason why it's the most common knurling pattern. Well, that was all interesting, but how does it transfer to the starting speed of my tops? For this, we'll need a new experiment, and it's much more straightforward. I just attach the test subject to the top of Mark 23, and I see how fast I can start it. Before I even started testing grips, I decided to play around with some new spinning techniques. Using my palms, for example, was a popular suggestion. But although it was fun, I couldn't find anything that could beat the normal finger style. It was only towards the end of my tests when I made a discovery, but I'll explain that later. Let's start by testing the most important variable, diameter. I've got to say, the results of this test really surprised me. There's a clear negative linear relationship between starting speed and diameter. That's right, just the stem alone, which provides the least torque, starts the top the fastest. How can this be? Well, it's because the limit isn't your strength, it's how fast you can snap your fingers. A handy formula to explain this says V equals omega R, where velocity is the speed of my fingers, omega is the RPM of the top, and R is the radius of the grip. Now it's easy to see that if maximum finger velocity is fixed, then we want the radius of the grip to be as small as possible. However, it is not as simple as making the thinnest grip possible. The downside to small grips is that it takes longer to get up to speed. In fact, it, it took well over 10 minutes to max out just the stem. One good solution to this problem is using a tapered grip. The thick end allows for a quick acceleration up to speed, and the fine end allows for a high maximum velocity. So my next experiments were to determine the optimal taper. I decided I wanted the thick end to be larger than the stem and for the thin end to be smaller, so I made some 4 to 1 and 3 to 1 millimeter tapers. Then I varied the length of these from 5 to 30 millimeters. And here are the results. Interestingly, in both cases, it looks like the optimal length was around 15 to 20 millimeters. I suspect this is partly due to the flexibility of plastic at such fine scales, but I went with it anyway. The important thing is that the 3 to 1 tapers all perform better. This really goes to show how thinness seems to help with starting speed. I also tested some double tapers, 3 to 4 to 1 millimeters and 2 to 3 to 1 millimeters, and I found this 20 millimeter long one to be the best. Finally, I tried adding the best patterns to this grip, and the results were a bit heartbreaking. The plain, smooth, linear tapered design did the best by a strong margin. After all that, eh? So there we have it. This is the best grip for my spinning tops. That doesn't mean it's the best for all spinning tops. Mine are large, heavy, and started with multiple twirls. For a smaller, single spin design, this would not be the best. It wouldn't even be close to the best. For that, the knurling pattern becomes much more important, so none of the data I collected will be wasted. There is one more thing I wanted to do in this video, and that is to break the record for the fastest handspun top. This isn't an official category or anything, and it's difficult to find a number online, but after some research for tops roughly by size, it looks like 3199 RPM is the fastest. Now that's crazy fast, but I have some tricks up my sleeve to help me achieve it. This is the magic technique I developed. I use my left hand to get up to about 1500 RPM, which helps to conserve the strength of my right arm. Then I switch to my right thumb and index and power up to about 2200. And finally, I swap to my thumb and middle finger. This is the new technique I mentioned, which generates less torque but more speed. And as we know, speed is key. When I get tired, I do some twirls with my left hand. Although this doesn't add speed, it reduces the amount of RPMs the top loses. Then I go back to my thumb and middle finger, and I repeat this process again and again, squeezing out every last bit of speed I can until my muscles are too exhausted to continue. This was my first time getting over 3000 RPM. Yes! Woo! 
I continued practicing and implementing new tricks and after many tries this was my highest speed. Three thousand two hundred and two RPM. A new record and a new personal best by a whopping thirty percent. This is truly unprecedented. But what impact will this have on my spin times? And what's this? Well, you'll have to catch my next video to find out. So subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and do comment your thoughts below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.